Before we get to your fight against Frankie Edgar, I got to talk to you about this bottle cap challenge. That uh, I don't think you started it, but I feel like you were the guy who, who kind of turned it on fire, right? How did how did all that happen? You know, I told you guys before. You know, a great magician doesn't reveal his tricks. <laughs> I just joking, you know. Uh, <laughs> shout out to my man Arson. Shout out to John Mayer. Um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. It's I, we just wanted to do something that's super accessible, you know. Everybody was bottle flipping, you know. I guess so. We turned it to bottle kicking now, you yeah. know. As uh, it was just cool, you know. The whole thing actually was was about doing it. When we did it, it was I actually have a story, you know. There's this girl uh, we work out together. Her name is Cleo Moniz. She's pretty known in the surf world. Uh, she was a world champion, world champion in, in surfing, and uh, she was like hitting me up like, "This is so cool. This is so cool." I was like, "You can do it. You can do it. Try." She said, "I can't. I can't do it." And she ended up doing it, and her one of hers ones, hers one went viral. Like she went viral too, and. Uh, I was like, look, you know, so this whole challenge thing was just about just giving people the opportunity to actually try it, you know, to introduce people not to the sport, but to, uh, to, to martial art, you know, and, and just be like, look, if, 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 if you guys just tried it, you know, so much people say, I can't do this, I, I, I'm not going to be able to do it, just try it, and they figure out they, they did it, you know, Mini Bless did it. I, a lot of people started doing it after Mini Bless did it, you know, he was begging me to do it. I was like, look, we got it, he did it, and... Uh, you know, it's just, it was just about uh, encouraging people to, to try something, you know, try something that's brand new. It is kind of an intimidating move, though. Like, maybe if you had just, like, you know, punched, punched it off. But the spinning, the whole spinning part, I think, you know, maybe a lot of people out there are like, ah, no, I don't think I could do that. Good fun, good fun. You know, it, 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 it's, uh, it is what it is. It's just, it was just something that, you know, go ahead and try it. Never say never. Say never. How many times for you did it take? For me? For the one you put up. For me, the one I put up, the good, the good old... Never a magician, never tell you his tricks. I'm not gonna, that is, that is hidden. I'm not gonna tell it, because it, what's the point? If I tell it, I take it away. It's, the mystery is great. All right, I'll just assume the first then. I'll assume it was the first one. And then why John Mayer? Why was he the guy that you tagged? I would, uh, why not? You know, why not? A lot of people, a lot of people don't know John Mayer. You know, when I tagged John Mayer, a lot of people was like, like being like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know why you would tag a guitarist, a singer, you know? I was like, the dude did it better than some martial artists I saw, you know. Dude's a legend, you know, and uh, just why not, you know. It's just fun challenge and uh, just try it to someone. I'm not, last thing on this, but uh, I'm not saying it just because you're sitting here, but yours, I think, takes it to the next level because it didn't spin off. It just sat there and spun on the top of the, the bottle. <laughs> seems like that's like, like that, that takes it to the next level when it's not spinning off. It's just staying there. You got to be precise. Right? Stri strike with, with, with motion, yeah. Well, man, how is the last... Two months been because you went what six years without losing a fight when you lost a fight a big one to uh -huh. Dustin Poirier uh -huh. what was that like coming off of that it's like I said you know life is like life is like roadblocks you know la shoots and ladders that's what it is you know the first time the first time I, I lost to Dustin uh, we had to rebuild you know I had to rebuild I had to add new coaches on my team I had to my body looked different after that first one and uh, you know this second one you're not going to change, you know. It's not going to change nothing. This is the second one. We get to rebuild. You guys get to look forward to a new and improved myself, you know. Whatever you guys saw in April, what you guys are going to see next is much more scarier. I tell you that much, you know. I tell you that much. Like, you can only do so much with success. You can keep going and success and success. And some, some guy would have success for the rest of his life and not change nothing just because he knows that's one way of success, you know. And... You know, these failures, they got to happen, you know, and I, and I attack them straight on, straight forward. I, I'm happy for this, you know. I, like, things happen for a reason. I truly believe things happen for a reason. That fight happened for a reason. That place, that time, it had to happen in this life. And uh, you guys going to see a new and improved uh, bless, you know. If you, you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And the best is blessed, baby. Well, you, you, you strike everyone as such a carefree guy, you know, anytime you're on camera or what you're posting on your Instagram. But then, you know, last year you spoke about being a little depressed, uh -huh. you know, after everything that you went through with the health. That, uh, was there a grieving period? Was there like a, like a tough emotional period after that loss? You know, I was able to move on. You know, um, there's not, that, you know, it is what it is. That thing was out of my control, you know. That, that fight is out of my control. I can't control it. I can control my feelings. And that's, that was one step, you know. Like I said, that, that, that whole 2018 before the Ortega fight, the depression, depression is real, you know, and, 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 and I had to go to that spot and find out who was there for me, who reached out, you know, and, and who was there supporting me. And I had all the support is there, you know, every, after this fight, a loss is a loss. It happens to the best of us, you know, even the greats got losses, you know, even the, 
the, the greats in other sports, Kobe Bryant, you know, uh, Michael Jordan, the LeBron Jameses, you know, like all these guys, these guys I, I put myself out there, uh, after, you know, even Jay-Z, you know, guys like Jay-Z, you know, they had losses, you know, but, but look at where they're at now, you know, it, it doesn't make you, you know, a true champion is a champion that can get knocked down, and then uh, we see how far you can bounce back up. Why did you lose that fight? I just, you know, we, we did, I did my homework, my, my coaches watched, and, you know, I can sit here, I can tell you a bunch of reasons, right, why I did and what happened, but I ain't going to do that, you know, I, that, it happens, you know, right now, me making, me saying anything of what happened that last fight was so close that if I talk about it, it's excuses, and I'm, I'm not going to do that, you know, Poirier beat a champion that night, therefore he a champion, you know, and at the end of the day, I can talk about the first Poirier loss because that's so long time ago. As in, that's years, you know, and uh, that's why. But to talk about that is so fresh, it's so brand new. It's like, it's going to sound like a complainer. I ain't no complainer, and I, I ain't about uh, taking away from someone's win. You know, he beat the best max. I showed, I trained, I did my camp, I did everything that I usually do. He's, he's just a better man, you know. He was just a better man that night, and uh, respect to him. How would you characterize how it has affected your career? I mean, I think media members and fans can sit there and say, Hey, man, I mean, he was online to face Habib. Yeah. A lot of people were excited about yeah. that fight. If he yeah. beats Habib, is Connor next, you know, yeah. double champion, this yeah. and that. You put it in your words, though. Yeah. What did that loss, how does that loss affect your career? That, that, it only went up. I don't know, you know, the Khabib fights there, there. You know, I, th I think the Khabib fights there, there. And the fans didn't want the Khabib fight, you know. Uh, it's very interesting that, you know, like you said, you know, the Irishman fight. If he ever figures it out, he, that fight is still there. You know, there's there's a lot of interesting things, you know, to do. You know, um, 55 ain't that far. It, it it isn't that far. You know, and uh, like I said, you know, after that in April, we I told you guys I was saying it over. Go look at the old interviews. I was gonna come back to 45 no matter what happened. Come April, and we're here now. You know, and I was I wanted to come back 45 in summer, and we're here now, and uh, and that's the plan. You know, there's a uh, there's there's a lot of time. I got nothing but time. The boy only turned 28. Yeah. People keep forgetting, you know. I've been I've been around for a long a long time in this game, you know. Uh, you know, you guys saw you guys saw me grow up in this game, so we'd be here. Competitive people, like I hear this all the time when I'm interviewing fighters. It's like if they lose, they're like, like it could be you know Madden, and, and you're like, all right, run it back, yeah, let's yeah, do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You moving up to 155 and having it not go the way you wanted it to go, does that make you want to go to 155 even more? Because now it's like a challenge that like you fell short of. Yeah, you know, look like. It's not even 155. It's not even about the weight. You know, I go to if they call me up tomorrow, if, if you know if something happened with Askren or 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 even um, or even Jorge, they call me up tomorrow. Be like, hey, we need a fight tomorrow. You do it. I'll do it. These guys, it, it they intrigue me. Those fights intrigue me. You know, like Ben Askren right now. People are saying he's one of the best guys in the world, and Jorge is doing Jorge. You know, who who doesn't want to fight Jorge? You know, he's the man. He's an animal, and uh, you know I respect that. You know, it, it ain't about weight. You know. My good friend is DC, and I told him a bunch of times, man, Stipe don't make that walk. You know who you fighting? You fighting a Hawaiian, <laughs> so you better get ready. And uh, uh, but it, that's just me. I'm competitive. You know, I, I want to compete with the best, and, and that's what you want to do. You know, it, like I said, I said this many times before. In the old gladiator days, they didn't bring out scales. They, they didn't bring out anything. You just fought. You know, and uh, if you think you're the best number one pound for pound in the world, that's what you do. You fight. What's compelling to you about Frankie Edgar? He's a legend. The dude's a legend, you know. And you know what's funny about Frankie Edgar? Me and Frankie is the, is the same. You know, we're the same person. You know, we'd go in there, we'd compete, and we and we fight to death. We both want to fight to death, you know. And for me to say that, though, I, I don't want to kill the guy. You know, we we probably should be friends after. You know, <laughs> we probably should be friends. You know, he, you know, you know, his coach. My team likes his team. His team like our team. You know, you know some. You know, I talk to Coach Henry here, uh, here and there on top of on top of Instagram. You know, and uh, I don't know if he's he's trying to be get info, or whatever. But it's cool. You know, we we should probably be friends after this fight for sure. Um, you know, a lot of people were surprised that, that Frankie got the shot though, and it wasn't Alex Volkanovsky. Uh -huh. You're fighting Frankie, and you just said he's a legend. I'm sure you're excited about this fight. Uh -huh. Is Alex a guy that, that gets your, your blood boiling? Is that, is that a guy that, that interests you? Is he a guy who has done enough where you get excited about fighting a guy like Alex Falkonovsky, or is he not quite there yet? You know, who, whoever UFC puts in front of me, whoever, you know, they say the contract, you know. There's one thing in this sport that I learned. You know, like I said, I got 20 something fights. I'm a vet. I'm a vet in your guys' eyes. And if I could tell you I learned anything of being a vet in this sport and all the support and, wh and whatever, 
the number one negotiating that you gotta do is not is not with UFC. It's with the fans. We live in a time where if the fans want to see the fight, the fans is somehow gonna make it happen, you know. And uh, that's what I learned in this sport. You know, I learned in this sport. You know, you want you want strong negotiations. Get the fans behind you. We saw crazy things happen in this sport because of fans negotiations. So, uh, you know, you know, I, I, no disrespect to anyone. You know, I don't know, but if I had if I had one goal, one tip to tell anybody is like, go get the fans behind you, and uh, we can go from there. Well, I agree with you that uh, you know Frankie, Alex, whatever it is, you're headed to 155 someday, yeah. and Habib, you know, if he's yeah. still there, the interest is going to be there. Tony Ferguson, Conor McGregor, all those fights are up there at 155. But I do want to ask you, Dustin and, and and Khabib, a guy you studied, you were prepared to fight in Brooklyn, and then a guy you did fight in Dustin, who uh, who gets it done? We see what happens. That's the that's the beautiful thing. You know, we see what happens. I I can't wait. You know, I'm just be a fan. And, uh, and just enjoy the fight, you know, just enjoy the fight. I think it's big. I think so uh, where Dustin is at his career, I think it's the perfect timing. Where Khabib is at in his career, I think it's the perfect timing. I think it's going to be an exciting fight. And uh, it's kind of crazy that it's going to be in Abu Dhabi and you just see the kind of videos of people posting up that they're building the arena right now. It's going to be ready. So it's pretty cool, you know, it's pretty dope, you know. Maybe if, uh, maybe your boy be around 55 that, that time of the year, just in, just in case. <laughs> Do it when you see those videos. Is a part of you like, ah, I, I wish I wish that was me. I, I you know that, that competitive out. side for sure. You know, I who doesn't want to go to Dubai? Yeah. You kind of crazy if you don't want to. I just want to go to Dubai to see to go see the the, uh, the 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 grave, the airport grave where they leave like people leaving hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollar cars there because they just they just leave the country because they don't want to pay them anymore. I'm like, what? <laughs> I heard, I heard they got Lambos and stuff as police cars. Yeah. That's the place I want to go, you know, but I know they got a bunch of crazy laws, so many blessed might have to stay home because it might be wilding out there too much. So, yeah, that's about it. All right, well, last question. You didn't give me a prediction on the fight, which is fine, but tell me one thing. One, one, what is the biggest thing you learned about Dustin Poirier in those five rounds we spent with him? Man, that, what I already knew. I knew he's a tough guy, you know, and, um, and, and when... And when Khabib fight tough guys, you know, like Ala Quinta and stuff, that, that prove that, look, I'm not going nowhere, I'm staying here, it becomes an interesting fight. So it, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. You know, I got nothing but respect for Dustin. I got nothing but respect for Khabib and, uh, you know, made the best man win. You win your fight against Frankie Edgar? You have any interest in flying to Abu Dhabi just to be a spectator for that one? <laughs> yeah, we see what happens, you know. UFC hit my line, you know. What? UFC can fly me wherever. They put me first class, so... Abu Dhabi, I'm here for it. UFC travel department, <laughs> hit me up, right? <laughs> 100%. 100%. some autographs or something, I'm there. Cool. Well, that, thanks so much, man. Thank you. Best brother. of luck with the rest of, rest of camp. Thank Looking you. forward to Edmonton. Thank you, brother. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and special content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.